Uh, welcome, folks. Uh, my name is Danny Martins. I'm one of the PMs on the PowerShell team. I focus specifically on uh, Azure Cloud Shell, OpenSSH, and kind of just, just general other SSH-related projects within Windows, uh, Azure, and kind of Microsoft all up. Um, so today, we're going to be talking about uh, OpenSSH in both Windows uh, and primarily in, in Azure and Arc. Uh, so for, to start off, we'll go over our kind of key investment areas, why you should care about uh, OpenSSH really going forward. Uh, then we're going to go into a quick demo of two-factor auth with UV keys and hardware keys for OpenSSH. Uh, and then we're going to go over to something that was actually released as part of a uh, public preview last week, which is SSH access to Azure Arc-enabled servers. So we'll go over a quick overview of that, a demo, and then a tutorial on how to set, how to set it up. All right, so why should we care about SSH, right? SSH is the, the, the tool that we're going forward for cross-platform remoting between Unix systems and Windows systems. All of our investment in the PowerShell team is on SSH, and so that should be your de facto uh, remoting protocol really going forward for PowerShell remoting and just remoting in general. Uh, and the reason that it's kind of the, the best is uh, it's cross-platform, consistent, secure, uh, really will hit on anything that you can do with WinRM or really RDP since it's really just an arbitrary port opening between two different machines. Um, so historically, Win32 OpenSSH has been the, uh, the focus of, of our team and the PowerShell team. Uh, the, the, the effort has been upstreaming the Win32 OpenSSH project into the overall OpenSSH project, which is maintained by an external foundation, the OpenBSD Foundation. And the goal there is to really take what we have for Win32 OpenSSH and port that into the overall product. So when they ship a release, that will be both cross-platform for Windows, release, uh, Windows OSs as well as Unix-related uh, Unix systems. Uh, as well as, oh yes, I forgot first-class citizen, which I think is the most important part. Um, so also the, the focus of Win32 OpenSSH is how can we take SSH and make that really the primary remoting protocol used both externally uh, by customers, so you all in uh, in Windows, as well as internally, so the different remote, the different uh, protocols and different tools within uh, Microsoft, as well as Windows, uh, make sure that they leverage SSH as the remoting protocol. Uh, but moving into Azure, which is where we had a, a really big press on SSH remoting as well, um, our key focus areas are primarily right now the Win32 OpenSSH extension. So how do we get SSH enabled on your Windows machines? We do ship OpenSSH as part of Windows inbox as a feature on demand for anything that we say is a modern Windows SKU. So anything that's Windows 7 and newer, anything that's older than some of the Windows 7 updates, you'll have to install OpenSSH either via this uh, extension or from a GitHub install. Uh, so we're looking at how do we expand that functionality. Right now it just does the install, but we need to really open that up for configuration since a lot of SSH uh, and the management of SSH has to do with the SSH config file. So how can I uh, manipulate my SSH config files, author them in a way that I can then deploy them back out to my servers uh, to be able to be able to consistently have a, a be able to consistently manage those machines. Uh, but looking forward, we're looking at uh, SSH access to Arc-enabled servers, which I will touch on a little bit later, as well as the unified SSH experience for Azure. And this is it's called Unified SSH Experience for Azure, but it's really kind of a unified SSH experience kind of across the board, uh, since we are plugging in for, with Arc-enabled servers. But if you all aren't familiar with that, we'll, we'll touch upon that in about 15 minutes. OK, so just jumping right in, uh, we're going to uh, go into a, a demo of YubiKeys, hardware keys, uh, and OpenSSH. Are you all familiar with YubiKeys? OK, great. So there's lots of yes, some no's. So YubiKey is essentially I can put a key onto this hardware device. And so instead of having to either have my, uh, a key deployed on my machine or know my username and password, I can do my authentication purely based on having this uh, thumb drive plugged into my machine. And so essentially, the, this is what's going to be used as my key to be able to authenticate onto my machine. And so the reason that you might use a YubiKey is it's, I say, maintains a really high ease of use. I just need to plug it in once it's configured and it'll work. But it also is super resistant to phishing, for example. No one's going to be able to fish a, a physical thumb drive from me, right? So, and if they can, that'd be pretty impressive. <laughs> All right. So. Let's 
pull this over. Here we go. All right, so here you can see I'm just running uh, uh, PowerShell locally. Uh, I am running a Windows 11 on this machine, which has OpenSSH 8.1 installed by default. That is on every uh, Windows machine, uh, every Windows 11 machine, you'll have 8.1 client installed by default, ready to go. Uh, if you want server, that's something you can enable via a feature on demand, which is a, a pretty simple two, I think two lines of PowerShell to enable and, and configure and set up. Um, but since this is a, a new functionality that we actually shipped as part of our most recent beta, so on our uh, GitHub repository, we just shipped 8.9. Uh, this is, I'll have to do a little kind of weird configuration setup here just so I can use that new feature. So I'm gonna navigate to my desktop and my new folder. And these are all things that you won't have to do once this ships inbox, and this will ship uh, in, uh, inbox in Windows at a future uh, Windows release, but we can't talk about Windows timelines here. Okay. So I need to start my SSH agent, and I need to SSH add. And this, what I'm doing here is just really adding this key as a known key to SSH, and I have to put in my, uh, my pin to this key. And you know what? It's important that it's unplugged plugged in before I do that. <laughs> so let's do this again. I'll put in my uh, pin for my machine. And there we go, I have my key in SSH. And so how can we really show that this is working, right? And so if I pull up my task, that's not what I want. If we pull up uh, this Hyper-V, it might be a little small for you, so I apologize for you. Uh, those in back, because I don't know how to zoom in on Hyper-V. So if anyone knows, let me know after the, after the session. Uh, we do have uh, a Linux server here running, uh, which is set up with the public key that's associated with my uh, YubiKey already on the machine, and the SSH service is running. And so now, if I go back to uh, my PowerShell session, and I just say ssh.exe to use the new SSH that's uh, in this folder, supply my username and that IP address, uh, I can just click enter, and I am directly into that machine based on my YubiKey. And to show that it is true, in fact, my YubiKey, I will unplug my YubiKey, do it again, and it will default back to my username and password. And so imagine you have whatever users and you've adopted YubiKeys within your, within your company, you no longer have to really worry about phishing on your, for security, uh, you, and you can just assign a YubiKey to each user and then set up this configuration kind of behind the scenes. So each customer or each user would have their own YubiKey and be able to access any of their machines uh, instead of using a uh, username and password to connect to the machine or uh, uh, SSH key file. Any questions on YubiKeys? I know I covered that pretty quickly. Great. Yes. Sorry. So, for, so the question was, can we tie in the YubiKeys into uh, AAD login for Linux? So I'll, I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit later for AAD login for Linux. But essentially, you can still use the YubiKey to authenticate you into Azure, I believe. Uh, and so if you set up your YubiKey to auth you into Azure, that's essentially using the, the YubiKey to be able to set you up to use the AAD login for Linux, which I'll touch upon actually now. Any other questions before I move on? Yeah. I love it, thank you. All right. Next slide, please. There we go. Okay, so this brings us to kind of what the bulk of today's session's about, and that's SSH access to Azure Arc enabled servers. Are you folks all familiar with Azure Arc? Okay, so the majority of you, are, uh, the answer is no. And so really the background for our Azure Arc is uh, Arc enables you to manage your physical servers and your virtual machines that are hosted outside of Azure like they are an Azure machine. And so if it's hosted in your corporate network, another cloud provider, for me it's my desktop that just sits in, in my office back at home, uh, you can then use the Azure management experiences uh, to uh, manage those machines. So that's things like if you have policies or tags or identity management, and in this case, SSH remoting, uh, you can then uh, con connect to those machines through Azure, even though it's not necessarily an Azure machine. Arc is a free service. It is free per node. And so if you enable Arc, and with this feature that we'll, we'll show in a little bit, you'll have free uh, connection to your machines. And you might not even need the line of sight. Because one of the I'd say, biggest value adds 
is this uh, SSH arc, or as I like to call it, shark, uh, doesn't require any public IP address or uh, any uh, externally facing inbound ports. And so you, know, you don't need line of sight to your machines. You don't need a jump box. All you need is to have this machine onboarded uh, and this Azure CLI uh, or Azure PowerShell module installed. Or if you're already set up with Azure and Arc, which you would be in this case, you could just use Cloud Shell and be able to connect directly from your browser. But we'll get more into this in a little bit. So yes, again, one of the big value adds is uh, no public IP addresses. Uh, we support multiple key forms auth, uh, key-based auth, username and password-based auth. Both of those are used for local users. So let's say I've, uh, I've already got, let's say, 100 servers that's distributed across both Windows and Linux. And I have keys provisioned for my Linux machines. I have username and passwords provisioned for my uh, Windows machines. I can onboard them onto an Arc-enabled server. And then I can migrate all those keys and still use that same form of auth just with the, with the scenario I'll show you in a little bit with just the AZ SSH VM command. Uh, you also have support for AAD identity-based uh, login that's currently Linux only, but we are working on providing that for uh, Windows. And so what that is, is when you log into Azure and you say an uh, AZ login with Azure CLI, or you do uh, uh, AZ account set, I believe, uh, for Azure PowerShell, you authenticate into Azure, you'll do like a device flow login, you're, you're signed in. And so I'm Danny at Microsoft.com, and when I log into those machines, I don't need to provide a username and password, I don't need to provide a key, I've already authenticated to Azure, so it knows I'm Danny, and I have access to these specific machines, whether that's either a contributor or an admin, and I can go connect to those machines without ever having to provision a username and password or a key. And so if, you, if identity management is all done in Azure, you don't have to provision any more of these machines. You can just uh, dictate your role assignments at a subscription or resource group level and say all the users should have access as a contributor and hide administrator access all behind JIT policies that you may have set up. Have I lost anyone? Just because I know a lot of you aren't necessarily familiar with ARC. I just want to make sure, I want to make sure people are keeping up. Feel free to interrupt me at any point. Um, and so the last thing here is, y'all might be familiar with SSH tooling already. Uh, this functionality will all plug in directly with SSH tooling. We do support ex uh, exporting an SSH config file, so you can pass that SSH config file to any open SSH based remoting, protocol, uh, remoting tool that can accept a config file. And so let's say you're using just already standard SSH, uh, SFTP for file transfers, Ansible, which is all SSH based, uh, you can use this and be able to connect to your on-premise machines without a public IP address, without changing any of your workflows, while still using those same tools that you already have set up. Okay. So, I've talked about it a lot. Let's see what it is. Um, we'll kill this. Is this large enough for those in the back? Great. Great. Okay. So what I've already done on this machine is I've done an AZ login. Um, currently, I'm going to be using Azure CLI, not Azure PowerShell for this demo. And the reason for that is historically, uh, there's been this command, AZ SSH VM. And as uh, I think Justin mentioned uh, previously, this was the AAD login for Linux command. And so what this did previously was it let you say, hey, I'm Danny at Microsoft.com. I want to SSH into my uh, Azure Linux machine, and I want to use my identity to log in. And that's all it did when it first launched. As time went on, we added support for both key-based auth, username and password-based auth, and recently Windows machines. And the big thing now is we're adding support for on-premise machines with, with uh, Azure Arc as well. And so now you have this AZ SSH VM command that can uh, really hit any year of your machines. And so as you saw in my Hyper-V earlier, uh, I do have this, where's my mouse? There's my mouse. I do have this machine running here right here at the top. I know it's a little bit small, but it's just the name is L-Arc Linux machine Ubuntu 20. Um, and so now I can flip back to uh, my, my command here, supply my resource group. Um, this is not the machine I want, so I'm gonna go back a little bit. Thank you particularly. Predictive IntelliSense for filling it all in mostly for me. Got to plug uh, Jason a little bit. L dash uh, arc dash 
uh, Lynn, Ubuntu 20, great. And so what I've done here is I've supplied the, uh, the az SSH VM command, I've given it the resource group of my machine, the name of my machine, and the local user I want to connect as, uh, so Danny. So when I execute this command, it's then going to say, oh, Danny's trying to connect as a local user, let me find Danny on that, uh, that machine, and then prompt him for auth. In this case, I don't have a key base set up, so it's gonna prompt me for my, for my password. And I am now connected to that machine. And so if I'm here, I can say if config, and if I spell it correctly, still spell it correctly, you can see that I do not have a public facing IP address here. So this is, uh, I'm connected to this machine purely based on me having an ARC enabled agent on that machine and me having the Azure CLI installed on my, my client. And so you, as I mentioned before, no line of sight needed, no jump box needed, I can just install this and be connected. Uh, the great thing about uh, the, the Linux AAD support uh, right now is you can also do it by identity. And so if I remove this local user login and then execute this command again, it's then gonna default back to authenticating me based on my uh, Azure identity. And so I've logged in as Danny at Microsoft.com and <laughs> this one takes a little bit longer because it's done a little bit more auth. And so if I go, uh, who am I? You can see I'm logged in as Danny at Microsoft.com. Great. Okay, and so as I mentioned before, this is also available for Windows machines. And so just to show this uh, real quick, um, here, I don't know if you all can see my mouse, here we go, because I, I don't want to walk in front of the screen. <laughs> so here I specify the name, this is a, a Windows machine. Uh, this is not hosted on my uh, local Hyper-V, this is an external machine. It does not have a public facing IP address again. Uh, but this is a Windows machine, so this is a Windows Server 2022. I've also specified my local user uh, login, um, but I'm just gonna remove this parameter real quick because if I run this command, it's gonna fail. And the reason for that is it's possible to have both an Azure VM as well as an Arc enabled server with the same name, right? And so you can either add that parameter that was showing up for us before, and so there we go. So I can either add this parameter or I can change that uh, VM to say ARC, just to denote that it's a, an on-premise machine. But if I then connect to this machine, again, we'll get connected to this Windows machine. And all I did on this Windows machine was uh, set it up as an ARC-enabled server, enable this functionality, and then install OpenSSH server from the feature on demand list. Yes? Exactly, so actually, I'm in a, I do have a hidden slide because I thought someone might ask this question. So I will unhide it just for you. If it gives me the option to unhide it. Unhide this slide. I wonder if it will update live. We'll find out. It did, great, look at that. PowerPoint, so good because it's got that power in the name, you know? Everything with that is gonna be, it's gonna be a good product. All right, so uh, again, I don't wanna go in front of, the, in front of the, the slides here. I don't know if you can, see. yes, great. So uh, this blocks, and I know it's not, I'd say labeled to the greatest detail, uh, and that's just because we don't technically own some of the pieces in here, so we didn't know if they wanted us to talk about everything yet. <laughs> okay, so here, what we're seeing on our local client machine is just this little box, right? And so when you install Azure CLI, we still have our, our client here, which is either gonna be your, your, it's your PowerShell that's running SSH, but when you install Azure CLI, we're also installing this little bit of a proxy on this machine. And so what that's doing is when you run the AZ SSH command, it knows you're trying to use this proxy. And so it's gonna intercept the SSH traffic, and it's gonna communicate back to Azure. And Azure, since we already have uh, the machine onboarded as an ARC-enabled server, we have an agent on that box. And so it's talking from this proxy back to, it's back to Azure saying, hey, I want to start a connection to this specific machine. It's calling into the agent, or the agent is basically querying saying, is someone trying to connect with me? And then it says, yep, and then it connects to this uh, uh, uniform Azure relay point in between. And so that's how we're getting the, the connection back and forth. Okay, so if I backtrack a little bit, 
Here we go. Okay. So I mentioned before, I don't want all these things. This is this no. Oh, it's because I'm still on my Windows machine. As you can see, it's a different machine. Ooh, ah. <laughs> great. Yeah, this is the kind of thing with, with remoting. Sometimes it's like, oh, great, I connected, everything works, you know? But there's really a lot that goes on behind the scenes to say that's the connection, you know? So the ooh, ah factor is like, wow, look, that's Windows PowerShell instead of PowerShell 7. Someone had a question here? When, so the, the, the question is really around this, the security of the connection, yeah. right? And there, is there an ability to, to, to just shut it down? Sure. So they can still be protected by a firewall, right? And so the, the communication from, and I'll, I'll, I'll flip back to the, that slide. The, the communication here, these machines can all still be, be, still be behind a firewall. The communication out of this agent is only outbound traffic. There's no inbound traffic at all to that machine. And so in terms of shutting down, I'd say this, this specific functionality, it's disabled by default, and it's something that the administrator on that machine or the administrator for that resource group could then enable or disable at will. Um, but if you're using things like the, the AAD remoting, so all identity-based remoting, you could just remove access uh, for everyone at will, right? Yeah, so this is all independent of Express Route. If you have Express Route, you really have line of sight to your machine anyway for, in most scenarios. So there's no need for this if that's the case, right? But this is just an option if you don't have Express Route. And I know Express Route is a, an expensive option that a lot of companies might not have. Um, so this is an option to be able to still connect in a secure way without that public IP address. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the question was if the relay communication was encrypted. So it's all still done over SSH, which is really encrypted anyway. And so it's just an SSH uh, tunnel. But I mean, like you're, you're negotiating with a relay. Are you just yeah. then handing off the, to the, um, the agent on the host or whatever? So mm -hmm. not, it's encrypted the whole, like the, the call, there's no, nothing the relay knows about the communication. Correct. Yeah, Azure Relay is basically like a little proxy tunnel. Yeah. So to repeat, Azure Relay is a TCP proxy that doesn't handle any of the communication. Great. All right. So flipping back again. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So we ran this command. As I mentioned before, this will work with any, uh, with any really SSH-based tooling. So if I just change this to config, uh, supply a file, and let's just call it like temp.config, right? So this is going to then take that information that I've, I have detailed here about my machine. It's going to write it all into an SSH config file. That does have, I'd say, private information. So you want to make sure you don't persist these config files for, I'd say, repeated use. You're going to want to generate and destroy them each time. But I can then take this config file, just go to SSH, pass a file in. I'm going to uh, complete this in. Uh, pass my file, so temp.config, supply my resource group for my machine, as well as the name of my machine, and then uh, click enter again, and this will still give me that same access to that machine, uh, but outside of the Azure CLI experience. So if you already have automation that's based around SSH remoting all up, you can just plug and play this directly, just add the extra parameter for the, the config file and the actual config file. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it can hit that port. Yeah, so, so the question was, as long as it can hit that port. So essentially what this is doing is, in the config file, we're saying, hey, don't use, quote unquote, standard SSH, use this other proxy. Oh, okay. And so it's really grabbing your communication before it really leaves your machine and says, hey, use this other thing that we've packaged in as well. But yes, uh, it was kind of alluding to ports. But really, this will, since it's an SSH session, SSH can do arbitrary port forwarding anyway. And so you can actually do kind of some fun things where you're doing this, but really you're doing an RDP session and you're connecting your, to your machine with RDP with a, without a public internet port or an IP address, and it's all over SSH. So that's kind of cool. So if we have time, I can show that at the end, assuming it works. I was going to say, for security guys, assuming your policy allows you. Yes, yes, all of that. Uh, for, this, for this 
everything is allowed because we live, I live in a beautiful land where I don't have to deal with policies and security for demo purposes. <laughs> so that's always important to call out, right? It's always a nice green field with roses I can run around in, so it's great. No bad guys. That's right, no one's trying to come and get me. Um, do, 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 okay. All right, so how do we kind of set this up? And I imagine, since a lot of you are new, we'll actually just do it all from the top. And if anything breaks, so be it. You know, it's live. It's fine. So I have this new machine. Uh, where's my mouse? Here, here we go. Great. So it's uh, Linux, uh, Arc, kind of same thing, but with a dash 3 at the end. Uh, and so this is just a brand new machine that I started up. Uh, really, I just want to get the IP address of it. So I'm going to just grab it. Uh, connect as if I was a local user just to get my IP address. And that, you know, it helps if I type incorrect. That's right, I should use a UB key. He's right. All right. And uh, open in terminal. And if config. Oh, you know, I guess I never installed it. You know, it's fine. This is a quick install. Uh, great. And so I'm just doing this. Oh, you know. <laughs> YubiKey, exactly. Great. So uh, this is only because I need the IP address. Uh, and then I'll just jump back to, I'd say, line of sight SSH instead of anything special and fancy to start. Um, OK, if config. Great, there we go. So if I go back and I grab, where is my, I lose my mouse so much, you know? We need a better tool. We need a power mouse, you know? <laughs> grab this. Uh, there we go, great. So if we do SSH Danny at 172.25.244.190. Great. So I should get my connection here. Uh, oh. <laughs> I think. I'm a lot further away from you. I say, I didn't bring my glasses. Am I? Well, that's fun. Am I still? No, I disconnected, didn't I? Oh, you're right. Good job. <laughs> Y'all are paying more attention than I am. Good job. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let's do that again. Let's do it again. <laughs> oh. Uh, Danny, at uh, how much of that is the same? At least the first one. Last 25.244.190. Nailed it. We'll make this big again. Great. So yes, I do want to connect to this machine. I'm going to trust it. But in reality, you should validate that that is actually the machine you want to connect to. Because man-in-the-middle attacks are not fun. Great. So now I'm on this machine, right? Uh, it's not an Arc machine. It's not an Azure machine in any way. How do I get it there? So uh, instead of opening all the docs pages, actually, let's just do it. You know, let's, we got time. Let's have some fun. So we'll open up this portal page. Come on, mouse. Great. So I'm in this resource group. I want to uh, create an Arc-enabled server. You can see I've got different Arc-enabled servers here. Uh, so if I just jump back to the portal, I'm going to sit down just because it's easier. Nailed it. <laughs> First try. <laughs> OK, so if I go into the portal, again, Arc-enabled servers is free for you to onboard machines. The only things that you'll pay for are the other services that use on top of it. In this case, we're not using any other services. So everything I'm showing you is free. So I'm just throwing that out there again. So I'm going to onboard uh, an Arc Enable server. If it lets me click Add, do, do, do. We'll refresh again. Maybe I'll turn off some of these Hyper-V machines. <laughs> And I don't want wait. Why'd I click that? We're gonna we're gonna just do let's just do it again. And on the side, I'm gonna kill these hyper machine V machines. You know, worst case, we just do a hard restart in the middle of the demo, you know? <laughs> Not a big deal. 
there's been worse things. And honestly, I'm, I won't be getting to that point. We'll see. You know, let's just do it. We'll do it live. That's what we're doing right now. Here we go. Let's see how it goes. All right. So where were we? Hyper-V. Open. Ta-da. Start machines. Let's turn this one off. Turn, yeah, VM's corrupted. Great. Sorry. You know, I'm turning these off. I don't think I need them anymore, but, you know, it's all good. That's right. I think we still need this IP address again, and it's not going to show it to me. Ugh. You know, what is demo without some interruptions? You know, it's about how you handle it, not about how it goes. I'll call you back after our short intermission. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. And come on, mouse. There we go. Two themes. Three themes. Don't run too many things. Learn where your mouse is. And don't mess up your password. Yes. Nailed it. Yeah. Oh, please, no. <laughs> Uh, config. There we go. Great. Um, PowerShell window. Nailed it. All right. And we're back, folks. SSH. What do we got? Is it different? It is different. Of course it is. It always is. Wait, you never added it to Azure I didn't. But I still need to connect because I'm going to have to run things on this machine. Uh, it's just complaining because it's had multiple IP addresses. Uh, I'm going to need to do some configuration on this machine and installs on this machine to onboard it onto Arc. And so that's what we'll go through first. Okay, great. We're there. So that's right. All right. Ooh, can we restore? You know, let's just, let's just go fresh. Portal. Great. Nailed it. All right. I'm not going to sit this time. I'm just going to kneel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're on the edge of our seat here. <laughs> All right, add. Great. So I've gone to Azure Arc. I've said add. There's options for multiple servers. Normally, you would do that. Today, we're just doing one. We're going to keep it simple. This is all the kind of background information. I'm not, if you all want to read this, great. Um, we're not going to read it today. Let's keep going. We've got some catch-up work. Oh, God. Oh, the scrolling. OK. Come, there it is. <laughs> Summit. Nailed it. And this was a Linux machine, so we'll just change this to the Linux again. And that's it. We're just going to use a public endpoint, and that's an outbound endpoint. Say connect, or next. I don't want to put any tags on it, so we're just going to ignore that. And so basically, all I need to do is run this little bit, uh, this, this script on this machine, and I'll be onboarded as an Arc-enabled server. Um, I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way. Copy. Doo -doo. Oh, oh, oh no. Paste. There we go. And these are pretty quick. There is one that takes a little bit longer. And that's where we should have had intermission. But you know, life doesn't always work that way. I shouldn't need sudo there. But you know, we're going to do it just for fun. And so basically what I've done there is installed, downloaded the packages, installed the packages. And now I'm going to run the actual connect command. So I've now got the Arc enabled agent on my machine. I need to just say, hey, Azure, look at me. I'm over here, right? So I'm going to grab this. Um, and this can take one more second. Any questions? Any suggestions on how to get better passwords? I didn't know that. What was it? IP space IP what? ADGR. ADGR. Cool. Good to know. Next year. We'll be ready. <laughs> you know, this is taking a little bit longer. I think the Wi Fi is a little bogged down. <laughs> you know, it's okay. <laughs> That's right. You should have tried it at 8 in this morning when you all were eating breakfast. So it was real fast. I would have done this earlier. Sorry, folks. 
But, you know, theme of today. Nothing happens as it's supposed to. They really should have a separate Wi-Fi point for instructions. That would be nice. And then it prioritizes it higher. Yeah. I, I could, yeah, that would be nice if we wired in. But, you know, feedback for next year. I also thought about hotspotting, but I didn't get good service down here. Uh, no. And I was like, better not. Should almost be done after it catches up. If anyone's ready, or I can wake you up from your nap once it's where it's good. There we go. Great. And sorry, but we still have one more. Paste. Copy. I know. That's the worst. I know. We need a way to access the full clipboard. Another PowerShell feature in the future. We'll see. Great. Oh, here we go. So now I need to basically sign into Azure, and I do that with a device login. So basically, I go into Microsoft device login, take that little code. I'm sure some of you are more are familiar with this. Connect. Uh, I'm going to say I'm me. Great. Next, going to two-factor me. There it is. Where's my phone? Oh, we're good. <laughs> It's all good. Where's my prompt? Here we go. Yes, that is me. Continue. Great. And we're back. Great. All right. So I've signed in, flip back, we'll wait for that to finish. Again, sorry, slow internet, not my fault. <laughs> All right, onboarded. So if I flip back to here, I go back to my Arc servers, and I'm actually just going to go back to this resource group, so sorry for jumping a little bit on y'all. And I'll filter this down to my Arc enabled servers, apply, scroll a little bit. Great, so now you can see. Number three, which is the one we just onboarded, right there. As you can see, don't fall Oh man, it fell again. <laughs> We're back again. <laughs> Here we go. Number three. Ooh, ah, it's onboarded. All right, so before I disconnect, sorry, I'm going to fix my mic again. Snap on there, mister. Maybe I'll just do it the old fashioned way. Can you still hear me? Great. Did I hear a no out there? Okay. Right. So the only thing, so if you are already onboarded to Arc Enabled Server, so if anyone was already at this point, all you need to do is a sudo az cma agent. Uh, and that's just the Azure uh, Arc agent that's on the machine. Um, and you know what? It's here, let's just do this. It's going to be easier to just copy and paste it in. We got to catch up some, some time a little bit. We'll open PowerPoint. We'll grab my notes. It's all good. Actually, you know, let's do it a little better. Let's do it one better. Because you all are going to be greenfield. Let's just start from the top, you know? We'll just go to our docs and we'll just get it from there. I'm getting my five minute warning. We got to go quick, folks. Let's go. So we're going to skip all the, the prereqs because we've already done all this, right? And so now we get to this point where, hey, I need to do something on my machine. All I need to do is this AZ CMA agent configuration. Set my incoming configuration ports to 22 or whatever you want to use for SSH. We're defaulting to 22 because that's what default is. Get rid of this so I don't double it up. Paste. Enter. So now I've set it to be port 22. I'm going to exit out of this machine because I don't need to be connected to it anymore. And there's one last thing I need to do uh, for this. And I basically need to say, hey, Relay, use this endpoint to connect. And I know this is kind of a little bit of an ugly thing, but we're working on getting that hidden behind the scenes so you don't have to do this anymore. So actually, AZ, rest. Oh, rest. There we go. Look at that beauty. And let's just change this. One, five, two, eight, three. Enter. Great. And that's it. After this runs, I'll be able to, hopefully, 
you know, I've messed up a bunch of things already, so hopefully it still works. Uh, do A, Z, whoops, Z messed up already. A, Z, S, S, H, V, M, and we'll just fill this in, grab this, change it to a do, 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 do. L dash, arc dash, lin, Ubuntu, 20. D thank you. That machine was off. All right, fingers crossed, y'all. Look at that. Do I want to trust this machine? Yes. Added. Give me my connection. Get my password right for maximum effect. Yes. Woohoo. Done. And you know, without all my fumbles there, that was probably like five minutes if you had good internet. You know, that's pretty quick. You know, that's pretty easy. And all of that's free. So that's kind of nice, too. So, cool. All right, so jumping back to my slides because I have three minutes now, so we got to really power through. Present, where's my present? Present. Nailed it, great. Um, cool, so I think the big takeaway is we have this AZSSH command. It's pretty cool. You can use it to connect to your Linux machines, your Windows machines. You can use three different forms of auth or two and a half. And you can use it to get to your Azure IaaS machines, which I didn't show, but it's the same thing. All you change is maybe change one of the parameters to say instead of Microsoft.hybrid compute, say Microsoft.compute. That's it. Uh, and it's all free, and you can use it to get to your on-prem machines without a public IP address, which is pretty cool. And if you're worried about having agents on your on-prem machine, just use it as your jump box. Your jump box already has a public IP address. If you're worried about that, just put this agent on, use arbitrary SSH port forwarding, use a new jump box using this command, and there you go. So that's pretty cool. Um, any questions? There was a lot there. I'm happy to have any, yes? Can I do a side session on the RDP portion? Um, in the time afterwards, I will show it. It's very quick. Or I can just do it really fast. Let's do it, you know? <laughs> Let's do it. That, you know, that's a theme of today. <laughs> right, exit. So I'm exiting this machine. And I think, you know, I have it all copy and pasted, so let's just grab this. Because I thought someone might ask, like, what about RDP? And you know what, to be honest, RDP, you probably shouldn't be using RDP in the first place. It's not auditable. If someone RDPs into your machine, that machine is now basically in an unknown state. Anybody could be doing whatever they want. You have no way of knowing what they did, right? If they're connecting with PowerShell remoting, you can audit that PowerShell action. If they're connecting with SSH, you can audit that action. If they're using Windows Admin Center, which I think is, is growing in popularity, I don't know if all of y'all use it, you can audit that because it's all based on, uh, it all runs PowerShell behind the scenes. So if you need a GUI, use Windows Admin Center. If you, someone, uses, as someone uses RDP, you're now basically in a break glass scenario where you don't know what happened, right? But anyway, <laughs> let's RDP. <laughs> I mean, it, it, if, you, if you have to, if you have to, oh, hold on, hold on, oh, oh, yeah, great, great. So what I did here is I took that same command that I used to connect to my Windows machine, right? And we support arbitrary SSH port, uh, arbitrary SSH parameters. So you just put a dash dash and then a space and then whatever you want for SSH at the end. And so let me, oh gosh, I don't want this. Get rid of there, no double username. Get out of there, you don't belong. Okay. Um, dash dash, resource. Is this machine on? Yes, this is the one that was not hosted on my, on my local computer. Good question, though. Someone's paying attention. Uh, Microsoft.hybrid compute. Did I spell that right? You know, caps don't matter. It's fine. So I run this. Basically, what I've done here is I've done my normal command. And then I've said, hey, give me some arbitrary SSH things. And so this L is basically saying, do this port forwarding from my local host uh, 1.3389 to remote uh, 338, or to my also local host 3389. So that's basically saying on my own machine, hey, grab what I'm putting here and then just look, make it look like RDP. Uh, and then I'm saying no cons. Oh, I left a dash out there. Hold on. That won't work. Where is that? Where is it? Dash. Great. 
That's saying, don't give me any prompt basically back. So now I've done this. It's going to ask me for my password still because I need, to, I need to authenticate to SSH. And now I've authenticated to SSH. And if I open up RDP, where did it open? Over here. And I say localhost colon 13389. Enter. I'm going to have to also authenticate to RDP. Yes? Ta-da. <laughs> it's a server. You don't need a GUI. <laughs> it'll, it'll take it a second. There we go. So great. Go give it a try. It's in public preview right now. If you want to read more, you know, let's just do it on the server for max oh it's kind of slow. Maximum effect. AKA dot MS. I can give people links to this. You know, thank you. AKA dot MS slash SSH arc slash docs slash not dot overview. You know, not peeverview. Oops, not the slash. Overview. Ta da. Blank screen. There we go. <laughs> so I'm happy to ask. Ask or answer questions about this. Uh, go get a review. Uh, give it a, a read. This released last Monday, so it's brand new. I'd love to get your feedback while we're here, and let me know. <laughs>